Hello, it's Dawn here from Dawn's Inspirations. I've got another freebie mini album to share with you. Here in the UK in June, it's Father's Day. So I wanted to make a little album to thank all the dads out there. This is a smaller version that I've made here. And for making this one, I've used 8x8 eight eight square um, papers. But we're going to make a bigger version. So to make the bigger version, you're going to need four sheets of double-sided pattern papers. You want double-sided because you're going to see both sides. Okay, so this is just some I had in my crafty stash at home. So four sheets I've got here, and I'd say this this is about 180 GSM, but you can get away with 160 really easily. So that's the pattern paper I'm going to use. You're also going to need two sheets of um, pattern paper which is single sided and this is to make the cover so you need two sheets of the single sided and I've gone for papers again at the same paper pad so everything matches which is perfect you're then going to need five sheets of cardstock and pick a cardstock that matches with your pattern papers I'm using a coordinations cardstock here which I think goes quite nicely and you're going to need your cardstock for your uh, photo mats, for your tags, for the embellishments to go on your album, to cover the inside of your album and your hinge system. So I'd say about five sheets, four and a half at a push. Okay, so let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is take one of the sheets of my pattern papers and I'm going to fold turn this over so I've got the plane on this side now I've got my score pal score pa um, board here which is great because I've got a lip all the way around which is going to be really useful when we come to fold this paper so to start with you're going to fold in half so because I've got the lip running all the way along I can butt this right up close and then I can just press down so I haven't even got to worry about scoring it. I can just fold it straight over and then go in with my bone folder to burnish that fold. Okay, so that's your first fold. Second fold, we're going to go diagonal. So again, using your board to help you out. So get that right up in the corner. There we go. And the same thing again, I'm just going lightly with my hands to start with when I'm happy that it's all in the right place. I can then go in with my bone folder and burnish those folds. So that's two folds. Now you've got a centre point and now we're going to start folding up to the centre point. So you're going to take each corner we're going to fold the center point now you've got a line that we burnished along here so you can use that to help start you off so again hold it when you're happy run your fingers along and then burnish with your bone folder and we're going to do that on all four of the corners so I did see um, somewhere on the internet I can't think whether it was on um, Pinterest or when I was just going around on YouTube someone doing a fold like this to make an envelope and I thought well making an envelope that's a great idea but you could go that step further and that's why I've created this album so just from that little idea that I saw on the internet I then can make that into an album because you can see now already where the envelope idea is coming in okay so and that's what I saw on the internet and thought right let's take it a step further and make a mini album so there's your envelope idea but we can take it that step further now we've done our fold line across the back here we're going to fold that back on itself and then I'm going to burnish all my score lines again to make sure they're nice and crisp and this basically is now a page for our mini book so we're going to have a pocket that opens up which will take 
a photo mat. This centerpiece is going to have glue along it, but we'll have a pocket at the side to put a tag. And then when you turn the page, you've got another pocket for a photo mat. So quite a lot of opportunities. So that's page one. Let me do that again with you in case you didn't see it. Again, you know, we'll just go over things again. I like to make sure everybody is on the same page, so to say. So I've got my pattern paper facing down with the plain side of my double sided on the inside. So first fold is in half. Burnish down with your bone folder. open it out and now we're going to go diagonal so these scoreboards are great for this the score pile is the same because we have that lip it really does help to uh, position everything where you want it bone folder then give that a good burnish open it out again and now we can start fold into our center points so get your center and I'm starting with the one where I've got my line so when I'm happy where it is go along with my finger and then I'm going along with my bone folder now this paper collection is from first editions I will leave a, um, a link on my website to the paper I've used but it is just paper that I had in my crafty stash at home so to make this project I have not gone and bought anything special which is great this is what I love about crafting and I'm sure a lot of you do out there that follow me you like to know that you can put a video on follow me with stuff you've already got in your crafty stash okay so last one meet that one in the middle Okay, that's that. And then I've got my centre half fold lines. I fold that back on itself and now just re burnish all my score lines. Okay, so that's our pages. There's two there, and I've already gone ahead and made another two so that's my four pages so in this album I'm putting four pages but you can choose if you want to add more and that's not a problem at all your choice entirely so you can go ahead and add more if you wish so they're my four pages what I've done on these is I've got a decorative um, corner die um, this is from the Downton Abbey collection from Crafters Companion and they've got a set with four corners in it decorative corners so I've die cut these out just to put on the envelope ends of the pages just so someone knows to open up and have a look inside just finishes it off nicely and again I've used the cardstock for that so let me go ahead and stick these down I've cut four more out here so let's bring these in and we can stick these down on our other two so they can be drying off so I'm just going to use a bit of the Kalal Tacky for this now, and I shouldn't really put it on my hand but it's only on there for a short time while I do this so I'm just dabbing that on there and then this just sticks up and this is using bits of the paper collection that I told you about so don't worry if you've got glue on there because you know with the Kalal you can rub it away okay so you know that's why I've put sort of five sheets of your pattern paper because I've used it for the uh, title of my book I've used it for the embellishments so everything matches in the same and I think that's makes it look more professional okay and then this one again get glue on there see these corners look just lovely on those envelopes so you could do that if you're card making as well it's just a, 
a different way of finishing than the moth, isn't it? So, uh, quite nice to add to your card making. You could do that with Christmas coming up just for a special touch there. Okay, so that is my four pages done. So I'm going to just pop those to one side. Now the next thing we need to do, let me just get a wipe from my hand just to wipe that bit of glue off for the minute. Okay. Right, the next thing we're going to do is out of your cardstock, find my ruler, then I can tell you some measurements. Lost my ruler now. Seem to be losing everything today. Right, here we go. I've got my ruler so I can give you some measurements. Okay, so out of the cardstock, let's start off with our photo tags. So I've done four, um, eight photo mats. So these are actually going to go inside each of the half envelopes that we've made. Okay, so they fit inside there nicely. You can make several for each pocket, but I've just made one for each pocket, so I've got eight. Okay, and these are measuring eight and a quarter inches by four inches, and I've rounded the corner. So you need eight of those. Let me tell you in centimetres as well. So for centimetres, it would be 21 centimetres by 10 centimetres. Okay, so we need eight of these, which I've already pre-done, and I've rounded my corners with a corner round. But again, that's totally optional. If you haven't got one, don't worry, you can still make the project. So that's my photo mats. The next thing I've done is I've made tags. Now the tags are actually going to slide inside the pocket. So it just gives another place to add photographs, to write journaling, leave little notes, you know, for Dad's on Father's Day. When the children were little, it was a great place. I'd give them some little scraps of paper and get them to draw pictures of Dad and Granddad. And it's a great place to even stick some drawn pictures on there because it's personal to them and it's never going to date and they've always got it to keep. So we've got four of these. So these are measuring, let me do inches first for you. So these are measuring, you're going to cut your, your card at eight and a half inches by three and a half inches. Let me do the centimetres, which is going to be, I'd say 21 and a half centimetres by nine centimeters okay and then what I've done is I've rounded these off I'm not going to put any ties on these tags but I've just used um, a die to give this shape so let me bring in the dies that I've used this is just a set of nesting dies okay these were ones that I used when I was on Ho Chanda doing the, a program so these are just a shaped nesting die and what you need to do I've used the biggest one that I've got and if you slide your card underneath so you're putting it through the die and sliding it underneath so you're going to go right to the top of your card and then pop that through your die cutting machine okay so that's going to cut that edge but because we threaded this through the top it's not going to cut this bottom bit so all that's going to do is then give us that lovely shape on the top so it's a different way of using your dies and a nice way of finishing these off so if you don't have any nesting dies or a die cutting machine again do not worry you could just round the corners off like this or you could leave them plain or you could put a hole in a bit of ribbon choice is yours but this is what I've done on mine okay so that's my tags I've got four of my tags and then eight of my photo mats. Let's bring all these in here. Okay, so they're all ready to go. Right, to make the cover for our book, I made this in my usual cheats way because I wanted to try and use everything that I've got here at home. And I've used a cereal box. Okay, so just keep hold of your cereal boxes. As you know, great way of using them if you're starting out and the spine on this is measuring at seven centimeters 
which is roughly two and three quarter inches so it was a large cereal box because I needed the length okay so this was the bottom of the cereal box and then I've cut one side off so I needed that length so this was my cereal box cover and it, I hate to say it, it was a cheaper cereal and the, the boxing wasn't quite firm enough so what I did do to firm that up, let me just show you what I used. I had some of this grey board left. This is just like mount board. You can pick this up in the UK here in uh, craft shops, um, anything like that you can pick that up from. And all I did with my cereal box was I cut stuck the same size on the cereal box, leaving a gap in between where you've got your folds so this has just made it really sturdy now okay so that sturdy that up which is perfect I set you to get two sheets of single sided pattern paper and I don't know whether you can quite see there's a join line down there and that's where I joined by two sheets of 12 by 12 single sided paper together so then I stuck them all on the outside and folded it in and then I've used the cardstock on the middle again with a join down here to, for my inside cover. Now there is a separate video on how to do a cereal box cover so if you haven't seen it I'll leave a link at the bottom of this video and also on my website so a lot of you I know do the cereal box one already so perfect but that's the way I've done it on this one. So we need to now add our spine, or our hinge, I should say, not our spine, our hinge. So again, I've used the same cardstock, okay? So this is measuring, let's do the old money first, four inches by two and a half inches, which is six and a half centimetres, by 10 centimeters that's the first one then the second one is measuring one and a half inches by four inches and again in centimeters that's four centimeters by nine and a half centimeters so basically I'm going to do a stack the deck hinge system okay for ease because I think this fits down nicely so I've gone in on each end and I've scored half an inch in on each side so I've got my nice folds there on each side so we're doing the stack the deck hinge which is perfect when you're making a cereal board cover like this because you can cover all the way across so it looks nicely and if you use your same cardstock it all marries in nicely okay so I'm using the tacky glue to get this stuck down so don't be shy with your glue as well you know this project's got to last so uh, okay and then I'm just going to eyeball where the center is if you fan it out the side you can see where it's going to fit in so I've got like an eighth of an inch gap top and bottom okay I'm going to press down hard with that I'm using the tacky because it's a quicker grip okay so it won't move about too much and I'm just going in with my bone folder and dispersing that glue you want that glue spread everywhere if it leaks at the top wipe away with your hand while it's still wet and then that won't make wet mark your card okay so that's the first hinge wipe that bit of glue away there otherwise that hinge will stick down and then we can go in with our second one so this time I'm just putting the glue on the middle bit I know many of you that follow me have done this before so I didn't want to spend too much time on this part of the project. So again, just bring that in, pressing that down. And let me 
go okay now ideally I would leave that normally to dry a little bit but let's get cracking with our project and get this put together okay so we're going to start off with our pages now I've got two pages of one color and two pages of the other color so my choice is I can go for a color on each end and the lighter ones in the middle or I can do them alternate I think should we go alternate let's go alternate so I'm going to start off with this page the beauty of this book again is you haven't got to worry about threading on your hinges because we're actually going to do it while it's in situ now if you look at my pages they're the same depth as my cardstock here on the edge so the first thing we're going to do is fold back our hinges and I'm going to put my wet tacky glue on this side okay bring our page in and I'm butting it right up close lining it all up and pressing down okay and then just go with my bone folder so that's all in place okay so this is why this hinge doing it this way works out a lot easier for a lot of people so the next thing we need to do now is put glue on this side of the hinge and a very thin bead of glue all the way along so put glue all on your half inch hinge bit that's showing and then I'm just going to put a thin bead all the way along you could use red double sided tape personally I find the glue works better because then you don't have bits for your inside mats to stick on so I'm just folding that back on itself now pressing down really hard I'm going to open this up burnishing this down so this glue disperses I think I'm just going to take my board out of the way now actually, so I can really press down on this I'm going to lift both these flaps up for a minute and then I'm going to just press where I've got my glue ok and I can fold that open and that like that ok we're going to do exactly the same with the next one so I'm just going to start putting these in so you can follow along with me if you wish as you know my videos I do in real time so if you're making this and want to follow along with me I know lots of you um, watch it through first time and then put me on and craft along with me which is lovely And it's like having me sat in your craft room with you, which, you know, it's, it's a nice feeling for me, I must say. So, put my glue on there, and then my thin bead of glue along the top here. And press that back on itself. Go with my bone folder, dispersing that glue down. I know that these pages you can see already both match up nicely together okay now if you're worried about your bits not sticking down very nicely what we can do is I can just go along with some household pegs I could use um, some little clips just to hold things together while I'm doing this I'm just going to pop some on that one and I pop some on this one and then I can work on the other side so this one already is starting to take but we'll pop some on there just for ease okay so that's one side and then we'll work on this other side so what we'll do is let's work on this side so I'm going to go in with my spotty one okay so just button it up there wet glue I do like this uh, stack the deck hinge system uh, I, I don't know whether Laura Dennison actually invented it or whether it was something that came about like these things do that many crafters one to another 
she spotted it but that's how I first found it was from Laura Dennison so uh, I do like it it's a good hinge system you just got to remember to have enough glue on your hinges so it all stays in place so again I'm going to run my bone folder on these Let's do the last page and it's quite nice to do something for the men in your life as well because I think sometimes we do craft a lot for ourselves and we think the men don't want to have nice albums and things to look at but I think deep down they do and uh, I know many of you will message me and say that you've lost your dads and your dad isn't going to be around for Father's Day but to me this is a great way of remembering the good times I've had ladies that have been in touch with me that have lost their mums on Mother's Day but they've made one of these albums with old photos as a way of remembering their mums on Mother's Day so you know even if your dad's not around it's still a great way of remembering them and the good times so and it's quite nice to craft on their special day even if they aren't with us anymore so that's the last one there okay and I'm just going to pop some pegs on here and I should think this other one is already dry on this side I'll just lay that you can see as well with me doing this how nicely the pages lay flat and this is another reason that I've really enjoyed with this album just stand it up a minute while I stick the pegs right on that hinge there this other side's dry already so just shows how quickly it does come together okay household pegs are brilliant for that as you can see so you can see this side this is all dry okay but look how the pages lay nice and flat which is marvelous just what we want so while this side is dry let's go in and add our bits and pieces so I'm putting one photo mat in each side of each of the pages so as I say there's room in there you could add several photo mats you could make these into little photo mat books you could add little bits of memorabilia in here so there's several things you could do and this is you know I'm giving you the basics to start and then you can add to it and then I'm going to pop one of my tags in there okay so that's one page But this is a really quick super album to put together which what we all need at times you know by changing the paper collection you can make this for a lady you could make it for a teenager you know paper collections do change the feel of an album very very quickly so I'm doing this for Father's Day here in the UK but as I say can be used for any time how are we doing on these pages are these dry I think we could chance filling these up with the pegs off there now these photo mats that we're popping in here as you know are a really good size so if you've got six or four photos perfect you could put some stamping you could add extra photographs here you could put journal into the go with the photographs that we've got in here so there's just lots of opportunities here and each of these photo mats you can put photos on each side as well which is great you know don't just think oh one photo on there you could put photos on each side you could put a photo on the stuck on the inside of the envelope as well and don't be afraid to cut your photograph if you've got a, a long photograph cut it in half stick half there and half there don't be afraid to do that in this day and age where we've got digital cameras and we can actually um, print pictures off we're not using the originals it's a great thing to do so let's pop the last of my tags in there okay so let's pop that in there let's move all these bits out of the way so that's that all coming together 
okay so it's really nicely coming together the thing I love about it is the pages lay flat so you can look through the album nicely so lots of photo mats there lots of tags now the way I'm going to actually close my album normally I put a ribbon or a band um, and I thought how am I going to do this one make it a bit more man like again I went through my crafty stash and I found these little bulldog clips I think they're Tim Holtz ones or Ranger ones I've just had them sticking around and then this little chain came off some clothing so what I thought for the closure on this was I can just peg that on there and peg that onto the back and that makes it stand quite nicely closed but it's got a bit more of a male feel about it right I've die cut some words out here this is from um, Sarah Davis's signature collection just for men and I put world's best dad and then I've got lots of these um, cogs and wheels this is again from Sarah Davis's um, just for men collection okay so I thought I could stick those on now I could have gone in with some gilding wax and I could color these up but I'm keeping with the same theme and color that I've got through the album so this time I'm not going to do that I'm going to keep in this same burgundy color and I'm just going to stick some of these on there it's a bit harder I can do it on my hand but that's not too bad actually because using the, the glue that I'm using you know the tacky glue dries clear and rubs away if I get it onto anything so just pressing that on there let's put some of these smaller ones on here now so just bringing this together so it's just got a little bit of a male theme you know if you've got your dad that's into something special like cars or um, into you know flying or airplanes or trains you know you could put an image on the front here to suit them to make it special just for them so I'm going to put a little bit on here I'm going to put this one actually in the top as well put one down the bottom here and it's just about building the image up now giving a bit of decoration I've not put too much decoration on this is for men by the way you know you don't want to you know it's not like a ladies one where you can put lots of doilies and bows and flowers you know this is a male book so we want to keep it in that vein and make it more masculine and also the nice thing about it as well by having it plainer you could make several you know if you've got a birthday it's got a birthday coming up or you know you could make another one to go with it or you could make another one next year so you've got one each year you know if the children with the children you know it's lovely for grandchildren to give to their dads or granddads it's just I just think they're lovely it's just a nice way to say we're thinking of you we've, we've remembered you you know thank you for all you've done for us with bringing us up and taking care of us so just a lovely little mini album so it's not taken too much time at all you know yes I have cut my tags out and um, I cut those out ahead of time and I made my actual cover but all told like this video is just over 30 minutes long so this project could quite easily be done in an hour so another quick project I know you love these super quick projects that I do so that's my mini album for Father's Day done so I hope you like it I like it I think it's perfect cereal box cover I will put the link below and I'll, on my website for the cereal box cover and if you open it up opens out flat again I've kept this plain you can add lots more embellishments on here if you wish you could add more photo mats in here if you wish as well you could put some stamping you could put all your journaling but it's nice the way it lays flat you've got that half inch 
gusset in between each of the pages so there's plenty room to add some embellishments if you wish to do so but I've kept mine quite plain so that is my Father's Day album I do hope you enjoy making one and if you do please I'd love to see your pictures you can either share them on my Facebook page or email me your pictures and your story and I'll pop them on my Facebook page to share with other people because they're lovely to see now I've made this with 12 by 12 papers but you can quite easily make it with uh, 8 by 8 pattern papers this is the baby okay so this is made with 8 by 8 papers but even though it's a smaller album you've still got quite substantial size mats so the mats inside the 8 by 8 one made exactly the same these measure five and a quarter inches by two and three quarter inches which if I do it in centimeters forgive me is 13 and a half centimeters by roughly six and a half centimeters so they're a good size still for cutting down a six by four photograph and adding to them so I've done this one in a seaside theme I've just used the end of a paper collection I had for making one of my photo folios so just by using papers that I had in my crafty stash that were sitting there I've managed to put together this little album so this hasn't got a fastening on yet I haven't put a title or anything on there yet but just a great way of making albums so there's the Father's Day one which is done with the 12 by 12 but you know me if you want to do an 8 by 8 do an 8 by 8 as well so I hope you've enjoyed this mini album and thank you very much for watching I'm Dawn from Dawn's Inspirations if you make one share your pictures with me because I'd love to see what you've been making with them thanks for watching bye for now